The threat of Wilson Fisk has ended, and now the superhero community is ready to bury their friend. But if only they knew the truth. What will happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Devil's Reign Omega issue number one and find out together, shall we? So then, the prelude for this issue actually involves Daredevil going all the way to Mr. Fantastic of the Fantastic Four to try and use his advanced technology to track down Kingpin and Typhoid Mary. You'll remember that despite all their evil deeds at the end of the Devil's Reign event, they kind of got to ride off into the sunset at the end. End. A fact which actually seemed to tick off a lot of readers, but what I personally didn't understand, if you could read Kingpin's entire journey from the beginning of the Zdarsky era to then, and not walk away with a better understanding or maybe even a little smidge of sympathy for the guy, then geez, I don't think we were reading the same book, but I digress. Kingpin is in the wind and no one knows where to find him. Smart Money says he probably ran off to somewhere like Latveria where he can hide for the foreseeable future, but this manhunt will have to be put on the back burner as today, all the street-level superheroes in Marvel's New York are getting ready for a funeral for a friend. Yes, that's right, Matt Murdock is being laid to rest today, only it's not really Matt, it's his brother Mike. Some people certainly know the truth of what happened, but some people, like poor Kristen McDuffie, do not. In fact, she gives a very heartfelt eulogy for Matt, saying that while he lived his life in darkness, he always tried to find the light. And even without his strong Catholic faith, he probably still would have ended up being one of the best men she ever knew all the same. Aww. Matt Murdock's funeral has also become quite the place to schmooze. A bunch of people are there to try and get in with the brand new mayor of New York, Luke Cage. Jessica Jones is there too, and she's actually working her own angle. She's trying to find out what happened to the purple child, Joseph, who you'll remember was actually integral in defeating Kilgrave and saving the city in the first place. And of course, there's Butch Ferris, the brand new kingpin of crime who comes to rattle the superheroes' cages, though interestingly, him and Foggy end up having an unexpected one-on-one. -on -one. You see, Butch knows that it actually was Mike who died and not Matt, and he thinks this whole thing is one hell of a depressing sham that Mike doesn't even get to be buried and mourned by those who loved him and knew him. Now, how does Matt feel about any of this? Well, he ends up getting confronted by Danny Rand and Luke Cage on the rooftop. He says that Matt Murdock being dead for the foreseeable future is better, that him and Elektra have plans to take down the hand once and for all. And they better hurry, too, because Elektra says they're closer than ever before to maybe actually destroying the the entire world this time. Of course, Mayor Luke Cage has his own reservation, saying that Matt is clearly sad and depressed about what happened to his brother, and instead of dealing with it, he's just going to be throwing himself into the superhero life that much harder, which can't be healthy for anyone. Matt has an equally depressing read on his own brother, saying that Mike Murdock wasn't the sort of man who had friends, just people who owed him money, and that one day he does plan to mourn him, maybe even avenge him, just not right now. All of this important subject matter will need to be put on the back burner, though, as the heroes are forced to respond to a bank robbery nearby. These hoods thought they were real smart staging a robbery while the entire superhero community was mourning one of their own. Unfortunately, they proved to not be smart at all when they take a pot shot at the bulletproof Luke Cage, who is also the mayor now, meaning they just tried to kill a public official. Obviously, the united force of the street-level defenders are able to deal with these robbers like they were nothing. Unfortunately, though, even though Kingpin is gone, his fingerprints can still be seen all over the city in the form of the new Thunderbolts. You see, Luke might be mayor, but that brand new law Fisk passed, making it illegal for vigilantes to operate in New York City, that still very much stands right now. And Luke is going to have to work really hard if he wants to change enough hearts and minds to try and get that law overturned. That sure sounds like a big responsibility to take on, but elsewhere, Jessica Jones is actually taking on her own new responsibility as well. She tracks down Joseph, where she sees that he's being mistreated in a foster home, forced to to wear a power-dampening collar. She not only rescues the boy, but also gives him an impassioned speech about power and responsibility and not ending up like his father. And you know what? Jess is gonna make good by this kid because she kinda seems to adopt him at the end of the story. Wow. Jessica Jones taking one of the purple children under her wing. That is something. Now, as this first story in this multi-pack of stories comes to an end, Mike Murdock is put in the ground when Christian McDuffie comes to him with the Norn Stone, the magical Asgardian artifact that made him real in the first place. She admits that she doesn't really understand what the stone is, but she does know that it's something that clearly meant a lot to Matt when he was alive, and she, in turn, ends up making a wish on it to see him all over again before putting the stone in the coffin. Obviously, we know the stone grants wishes, but what form this will take for Christian is still yet to be seen. Now, the next story in this three-pack is actually a nice little tie-in for the upcoming Jim Zub Thunderbolts book. Luke Cage joins forces with 
with Monica Rambeau to bust up Crossbones and a bunch of the other supervillains who were deputized by Kingpin to go work for the Thunderbolts. As Luke says, the Thunderbolts weren't always evil. In fact, there were times in history when there were actual people on there who wanted to make the team something good, and Luke hopes that he can use his new position of power to do so again. In fact, the city has hired a whole new public relations firm to try and make them into a brand new, more heroic version of the Thunderbolts that the people of New York can get behind. Luke wants Monica to lead them, but she pretty much turns the job down right away, saying she knows exactly how this is going to go. She's going to put herself out there. She's going to try and be a leader. The media is going to needle her from every angle and try and make her look like an angry black woman stereotype. Now, that's a bit of a setback for Mayor Luke and the PR firm, but just because they didn't get their first choice doesn't mean they can't get their fifth choice. Lord knows Hawkeye's not doing anything right now. Want to see what happens next with the Thunderbolts? Go pick up issue number one when it drops. Now, the third and final story in this three-pack is also a Luke Cage story dealing with his first couple days on the job as mayor of New York. He knows that he has a lot of forces working against him, a lot of people who are still loyal to Wilson Fisk. Despite the whole, you know, turning the city into a high-tech police state, aligning himself with Kilgrave and turning normal people into zombies, just, pff, you know, politics, man, what are you gonna do? Luke admits that he only ran for the job in the first place to try and take Kingpin down, but now that he has the job, he figures that maybe he can push himself a little harder, a little further. Daredevil's doing his thing, so why shouldn't Luke also try and do more? And yeah, that's basically the long and short of this one. Maybe this'll lead into a series, maybe it'll get some backups, I don't know, I'd happily read Luke Cage Mayor for Hire. And so, that was Devil's Reign Omega issue number one, and overall it was a fine little pack of stories that manages to tie up a bunch of the loose ends from the Devil's Reign event. The stage is now set for the big new third chapter in Zadarsky's ongoing Daredevil saga, one that will see Matt actually shed the Matt identity and be Daredevil full-time, it seems. This story also pretty much promised that Kingpin and Typhoid Mary are going back into the toy box for a bit and that we're probably not going to see them for a while, which is honestly fine. Always leave on a high note, I say. Mike also looks to be dead now for the foreseeable future in doing so, actually kind of putting the genie back in the bottle from Daredevil's own One More Day type of story. The character certainly served his purpose and helped introduce us to Butch, a character who I hope sticks around and I hope we see more of. As he definitely promises to be a different sort of kingpin of crime for Daredevil to fight, one who has a more personal connection to Matt and more of a reason to want to see him be undone. I also hope someone really runs with the idea of Luke Cage as mayor of New York and it's not just something that ends up getting dropped because if so, that would be a real missed opportunity, especially considering that Jessica Jones adopted a purple child and you could tell two really strong stories there with Luke at work and Luke trying to keep his home life together. The two backups are good too, but I wouldn't necessarily call any of them super required reading, especially not for their series that they're leading into. Overall though, I'd give this a 7.5 out of 10. Pretty damn good. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cape Jewel again, thanking you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out my Amazon link down in the description. Yes, that's right, the Cape Jewel channel officially has its own Amazon storefront now. You can pick up a comic or anything else for that matter, and if you did, you'd really be helping me in the channel. So with that out of the way, everyone, I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.